Hey everybody, it's Seriously Soothe Me here, and today I'm unboxing this new paint set. This is the Lucas Aquarell Watercolors, the Aquarell Studio Travel Box. So, I'm, I'm really excited about this set. I first, yeah, I take the paintbrush out and try to see if I can get this plastic tray that's holding the paint pans out. It didn't work, but this plastic tray holds the paint pans in there very well, because as you saw when I flipped it upside down, the paint pans did not just fall out. So right here, I'm taking the gum arabic out of the paintbrush to make it nice and soft, and so I don't ruin the point of it. Yes, yeah, so one did fall out eventually, but for the most part, they stayed in there. And what am I going to do? I'm going to start off by testing it out in my sketchbook. So I'm testing out both the paintbrush and the paints just to get a feel for the colors, see if there's anything markedly different about them from other paint sets. So this is their student grade paint. However, it kind of reminds me, it does remind me a little bit of the Sennelier watercolors, their aquarel set. However, these are a little bit easier to work with, I noticed. Though I do have the Snellia tube paints, not the pan set. So that might be a difference. Um, what else? In the set, ooh, the magenta, so that purple, red, purple, pinkish red. It's very pretty. I really liked that color. I also liked their cyan or primary blue. It's very nice. It's not super granular, so if I were to use it in painting skin tones, it wouldn't make the face look all granulated out like ultramarine would. Um, so right here I have a piece of watercolor paper, and I'm just kind of splitting it up so I can... I was going to originally put, do a paint swatch, pigment name, or the paint name, and just do that. However, as you'll see, I kind of end up doing a, uh, I make it a little bit more complicated than that. <laughs> so I split it up for each of the paints, and after I'm done with that, I leave a little space in between each paint swatch so that I don't have to wait for one to dry before I can move on to the next. And then you see right here with a sharpie I'm going over this and I want to see how transparent these pigments are. So I have a sharpie and you got to make sure to let the sharpie dry fully before painting on it or it'll bleed a little bit. And so I'm looking at the box and I'm going through and they have the pigment, where is it? I'm looking at the box right now. Where's the pigment? Okay. It is not on the box. I was looking for the pigment information on the box, but it's actually on the paint set. On the paint pan itself. Yes, it is. So that's what I'm looking at, and I'm writing that down because I wanted to try to identify the colors by their pigment number versus just their name because different brands um, have different pigment ratios and I just was curious to see how this would turn out. So I'm going through while the Sharpie's drying and writing out all of the pigment information for each of these paints. And for the most part, the primary colors are all single pigments. Which is really cool. The their Viridian Green is also a single pigment. Their Yellow Ochre and their... They call it Rossi... Or, sorry, English Red. It's kind of like a burnt sienna color. So those are all single pigments. The rest um, have multiple pigments. So their Olive Green is has two pigments. Um, what is it? Pigment Green 36 and Pigment Orange 38. They're, they call it raw umber, but it looks like a burnt umber to me. Um, has Pigment Yellow 155, Pigment Black 7, 
and pigment red. I can't tell if that's 700 or 78. Let me look at the pan. Pigment red 78. And then their Payne's Gray has quite a few pigments. So it has pigment black 15, pig, oh wait, pigment blue 15, pigment black 7, and pigment red 176. So, yep, there's that. All the pigments. And then I'm using their brush, which is a nice brush. Comes to an okay point. It's not super fine, but it's fairly nice for one of the brushes that comes with the paint set. I like it. It's got, it's stiff, but soft at the same time. It's got a nice flex to it. Anyway, so what I did is I, for the swatch, I did full strength pigment at the top and tried to make a gradation down to the bottom of each of the swatches. So I diluted, I did like once with just pigment and then the next with water to dilute it and see how it blends and dries. Um, so far, they're all pretty even. The, what do they call it? Cyan, or primary blue, did not really do move or have very much movement. The ultramarine had a lot. It granulates. What else? Yeah, the only one that didn't really have very much pigment movement was the primary blue. The rest kind of moved as expected. The English red is a very strong. It is definitely opaque. Very opaque. As far as, well, not super. Their English red is more opaque than their yellow ochre, which is a little bit surprising to me because usually yellow ochre is a much more opaque color. And so then what I did is I decided to do a second la a layer on one half of it to see how it the paint's layered. And I did that on the next to the black line I made, but not on the black line. Um, just to see how it looked. And then, yeah, I just kind of followed that. So all these paints seem to layer really well. I, I like them, the way they layer much better than the uh, Winsor & Newton student grade paints. These layer much nicer. And they're much easier to get out of the pan. So with the uh, Winsor & Newton, you have to kind of scrub at the pan. These, you don't have to do that at all, which is very nice. So I brought that up close to the camera so you guys can kind of see it. And then I kind of waited for it to dry while admiring the pretty paints. <laughs> and I was still trying to figure out how if the uh, pan, the part that holds the paint pans comes out and I still as of now, have not been able to get it out. So, see how that goes. So right now, I am going and putting the paints in the order that I'd be most likely to use them. And once that's done, I don't. I use something to set them into place firmly. Here's your close-up of the paint swatch. Oh, it's very bright. Okay. <laughs> so right here, I am going to end up trying to see how well these paints lift, and I did not get very far with this process. I just kind of lifted the parts where it went over the lines separating them separating the pigments from each other so the little squares and I was going to do try lifting like right down the center but um, it's not really all that important to me so I just kind of moved on and on the back of this little swatch I decided to draw an eye and 
see how well these pigments mix together. So I do, I like to do a lot of faces and skin tones and things like that. So I thought, figured this would be the best way to test out these paints as that's how I test out most of my paints. So I decided just to go in and paint the eye and see how that turned out. So I started off with very like translucent watered down layers and I kind of built that up. Because some of these pigments are some, have a little bit of opacity to them, but I found when working with some more opaque watercolors, if you work with them in very watered down layers, they tend to layer better and not get all gummy, if that makes sense. Or make the painting look chalky. And these are, I had a lot of fun doing this painting. These paints are very fun to use. They're, they just seem so simple when you use them. They don't, they're not difficult to use at all. So I really liked that. And yeah, I will let you guys watch this whole process. And for the most of this painting, I end up using the, uh, the brush that came with it. However, you'll see where I changed the brush, and that brush is a Creative Mark Mimic. Mm, I think it's either a number two round or a number six round. But yeah, I will let you guys watch. Enjoy. And as we're nearing the end of this video, I figured I should say thank you guys so much for watching. And let's see here, the special word for this video is going to be cyan blue or primary cyan, yeah, just cyan blue. We'll go with that. And if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more like this, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And for that special word, you just comment that down in the comment section below to let me know you guys watched this part. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and stay creative. See you next time. Bye.